Chabad's everywhere. They have their website, and I think that's the first thing that people go to, and they read the stuff, and they think that represents Judaism, not knowing, you know, the intellectual side of Judaism. I see the attraction of mysticism, even in Christianity. I mean, people choose to be Pentecostal over being a Presbyterian or Lutheran. It's, it's nice. It feels better. I'm not against Kabbalah, but I'm against anything that contradicts the Torah or claims to be part of the Torah. Sure, teach reincarnation, but don't say Judaism teaches and then teach reincarnation. Or don't say Torah teaches and speak about concepts of Gilgulim. That's the problem I have. Right? And there are some dangerous ideas within it, absolutely. But I mean, there are some nice things also. We have to be able to make a distinction. And that's a thing that people have a problem doing. It's either all or nothing. They either want to believe that everything was given to Moses on Mount Sinai, including the Zohar and the Tanya and the Kutem Aran, or that they'd rather not be Jewish because the five books of Moses and just halakha is not enough for them. Okay. I would say the vast majority of people who come out of Christianity to Judaism nowadays comes on bad motives. They're not coming necessarily because Judaism makes more sense to them because if that was the case, they wouldn't become Chabad. They wouldn't become Hasidic. It's almost identical to Christianity. No, it's because I think they've romanticized Jews to such an unhealthy extent that they've even denied their God over it. They drop worshiping one Jew to worship another Jew. There aren't too many Avraham Avinus out there who came to this belief system because of ethical monotheism. Right? But although we didn't start off like that, we always fix ourselves and get on the right track and end on the right note. You know, there is a standard of how do you live out Torah that you do not find uh, within Christianity. But you have halakha in Judaism that teaches people basically about everything in life and how to live out Torah. Was that it for you or was it something else? I guess for everybody it's, it's different, but I wasn't really clear on the videos that I saw. I'm a different person now than I was 20 years ago. But when I left them, I also had this like over romanticized sense of the Jewish people and Judaism and Israel. And I mean, I moved to Israel as a Zionist and I left as what's called a non Zionist. I support the state, I just don't support it for religious reasons. Now it's really about trying to make the world a better place, trying to be productive as a human being, trying to be a good father, trying to be a good husband. I've evolved. I didn't learn this in Yeshiva. In Yeshiva, you learn how to read Talmudic texts and just repeat what your Rebbe tells you. But in terms of thinking on your own, I mean, it was a process. And God is spiritual. I mean, I'm not against mysticism, but I'm against any mysticism that calls itself Torah that doesn't appear in the Torah. What keeps me religious? One, I can't be part of a system that doesn't work. And I think Christianity, ultimately, at the end of the day, that philosophy will end up catching up with you. It, it can make you feel nice and ethical nowadays, but I don't think it'll last. And we see this throughout Jewish history, specifically like throughout Christian history. The scene of ethics and morality that we see in the Christian world is unique to American and British Christians. But if you look at Christians in the Middle East, they almost behave like Muslims, not in terms of trying to chop your head off, but in terms of an indifference, of not really caring. Of, right? I mean, this whole notion of trying to save the world, it was really something that started in in the U.S. with the revivals and in England. People like John Livingston going to little villages in Africa and putting their life on their line. I'm talking about Protestant Christianity. I'm not talking about conquistadors stealing people's gold. But if you look at Jewish history, Jews have ethically been always the constant seven, I would say, right? Throughout history where they didn't do anything too bad, at least the religious community, right? I mean, they just sort of kept Torah, they mind their business, and and that's it. You know, like, well, Christians could be nice to you today, and then tomorrow they could be burning your village. Just because they didn't have that individual moral training within their faith that Judaism has. I mean, Judaism, like you said, engulfs almost everything in your life, like how you court a woman, how you're supposed to honor your parents. There's do's and don'ts in Judaism, while this notion in Christianity that you're completely under grace, I think could get you to be ethical, but I don't think it'll last. And that's the main reason I remain Jewish. I think if being a Christian or a Muslim would make me a better person, I'd convert to Christianity or Islam. I'm not married to Judaism. But I've been Jewish for over 20 years, and I don't think I'm going anywhere because of that, because it just makes sense. At least the rational forms of Judaism, like the more Hasidic, Kabbalistic forms, I mean, it's almost like being a Christian, in my opinion. I am of the opinion that what's good for me is good for others, and this is why I teach it, but I teach a rational form. Right? I think individual moral training is good, and, and that's what really has strengthened Christianity 
Christianity doesn't exist on itself because it exists off the back of a Jew who personified commandments in the Torah, who acted them out. And when people speak about being Christ-like, they're pretty much saying we're emulating a man who kept Torah. Although I believe that that's not going to last too long, just because if you don't have those commandments in front of you, you ultimately start using your religion to do evil. This is why, although I admire Christianity and even Islam, it still doesn't compare to Judaism.